Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. It is a pleasure to have you. When we think of foundations for homes, you, you want to make sure that it's solid, that it's not going to shift or, or erode. And then you build your house upon it. It's important, because if a storm comes by or waters rise, you could lose your home. Our faith is no different. We want to make sure that our faith is on solid ground, that we're on a good foundation. And as Christians, our foundation is God's Word and God Himself. That's a foundation worth building on. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we hope you join us again. Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. If you'd like to follow along with our worship folder, you can find it online on our website. It'll also be posted on the screen for you. We ask God that he bless our worship today and we'll begin with our opening hymn. Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you rule over all things in wisdom and kindness. Take away everything that may be harmful, and give us whatever is good. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for today is Deuteronomy chapter 11 with selected verses. Here we are encouraged to be in God's Word, to have the Word in our hearts and in our minds, because the connection to God gives us reassurance and comfort for this life and the life to come. Put these words of mine in your hearts and in your soul, and tie them on your wrists as signs and symbols on your forehead. Teach them to your children by talking about them, when you sit in your house and when you travel on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, so that your days and the days of your children may be many on the land that the Lord promises to the, your fathers with an oath. As many as the days that the heavens remain over the earth. You see, I am placing before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you listen to the commands of the Lord your God, and I am giving you today. Or the curse if you do not listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, and you turn away from the path that I am commanding you today, by walking after other gods whom you did not know. This is the word of the Lord. The song of the day is Psalm 77. You are invited to speak along the refrain and the glory be to the Father. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. O oh, my people, hear my teaching, listen to the words of my mouth. I will utter things from of old, what we have heard and what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The Lord decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel, so the next generation would know them, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. The second lesson is Romans chapter 3 with selected verses. Only through the Lord can we be made righteous. And when we are in the Lord, he protects us and delivers us to our heavenly home. But now, completely apart from the law, a righteousness from God has been made known. The law and the prophets testify to it. His righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all and over all who believe. In fact, there is no difference, because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God publicly displayed as the atonement seat through faith in His blood. What happens to boasting then? It has been eliminated. By what principle? By the principle of works? No. But by the principle of faith. For we conclude that a person is justified by faith without the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. The verse of the day. 
Alleluia. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Alleluia. 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 The Gospel for today is Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 29. This will also serve as our sermon text for today. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are for ravenous wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. You do not gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles, do you? So then, every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then, by their fruit you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will, my Father, in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and drive out demons in your name, and perform many miracles in your name? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on bedrock. The rain came down, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, but it did not fall, because it was founded on bedrock. Everyone who hears these words of mine but does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the rivers rose, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. It was completely destroyed. When Jesus finished speaking these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not like their experts in the law. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join in confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join in singing the hymn of the day.
grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's kind of amazing the things that cameras can capture these days, if it be on a cell phone or an actual video camera. My nephews like to watch this show called Dude Perfect. Maybe you've seen it. These guys on the show try to do these crazy shots and throws and, and try to film it and capture it all happening. Maybe if you like animals and things like that, maybe you like watching things like Planet Earth, where you get kind of these videos and snapshots of animals that you probably never see in your lifetime and doing things that you'd never be able to see. My dad, this last couple of weeks ago, uh, he showed us a video of a kid who was rollerblading or skating under a row of cars like it was some kind of competition. It's kind of crazy the things that people can capture with their camera. There, there was something that I saw on Facebook recently that well, it took place in Norway. You hit play and it felt like you were there. You kind of see the, the rolling hills in the back. You see the sea that was surrounding this inlet of land. And it kind of almost looked like our cover on the bulletin for today. But all of a sudden, you notice the houses were shifting in ways that they normally wouldn't. All of a sudden, they look like little monopoly houses on a piece of paper floating on water. They, they shifted and shifted until they fell into the sea. And then they looked like little apples that were bobbing up and down. You can't help but think it's important to have a good foundation so this stuff doesn't happen. But you probably think for those people, they looked around and, and thought this is a pretty good place. The ground seems pretty hard here. The view is nice. Let's build our houses. But then all of a sudden the waters began to rise and started to erode the, the, the dirt and the, the sand and the house slipped into the water and was destroyed. We've had several houses that were built this last couple of years here in Abrams and I would assume whoever's building them made sure that the foundation was solid to make sure the houses would stand for quite a while. We really don't have to worry about a lot of water. You don't have Lake Michigan that close. You don't have other seas that could come in. But it's important to have a good foundation for your house. But there's another foundation that we talk about today. A foundation that is rock solid, a, a foundation that will not budge or move. A foundation worth building on as Christians. We might wonder how long they had been sitting there listening. We might wonder how long Jesus had been teaching and preaching to these people. Where we pick up for today is toward the end of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in, in Matthew. Jesus had spoken to this crowd about a variety of things, the way that they should live their lives, how, how they should conduct themselves with worship, how, how they should treat their spouse, how they should treat their enemies, and the list went on and on. But now Jesus is focusing them on the foundation, the foundation that their lives and their homes are built on, a foundation that was solid. He wasn't talking about the foundation for their homes that were near the Jordan or the sea. No, he was talking about a different foundation. A foundation that was not made up of mud and, and dirt or sand or cement. But rather this foundation was God's Word and God Himself. A, a foundation that was truly secure. However, there, there's people out there that try to erode away this foundation. That they try to take advantage of people. And Jesus warned this crowd and us of these attackers. For he says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly 
They are ravenous wolves. And there's a group of people out there that we might classify as evil. And they take advantage of the elderly, the weak, maybe those who just don't know. I know when I think about it and what they do, it gets me angry. They try to pretend to be people that they're not. Sometimes it's the police, sometimes it's the FBI, sometimes it's a bank, and the list goes on. Their tactics vary. Sometimes they use email. Sometimes they use a pop-up. Sometimes they use text or a phone call. And what they say isn't really true. They say something like, you owe a thousand dollars to the U.S. government, and if you don't pay it within the next week, the FBI will be knocking at your door and bringing you to prison. Or the pop-up pops up on your screen saying, you have a virus and your computer has been locked down. If you want this fixed, you have to pay us money to fix it. Otherwise, you lose all your precious pictures. Are, are these people really the FBI? Are these people really the, the, the Federal Reserve? No. Do, do they care uh, 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 really about the people that they're sending these emails to, the texts and phone calls? Certainly not. They're just simply taking advantage of these people and using it to their own advantage and, and trying to get a little wealth for themselves. If people like us get angry with others who try to take advantage of, of, of grandma or great grandpa or, or someone else in our family, shouldn't we get angry with those who try to do the same thing? Wouldn't we actively watch out for people who, who try to de deceive us, if it be through an email or even our faith? I hope we would get a little intense about it. I hope we would care. I hope we would watch out for those types of people. The sad reality is that these wolves are, are out there. Then they claim to be Christian. They even claim to be a, a pastor. And you might listen to them and it might be really hard to really pick out what they're doing. It may seem like they are extremely passionate about what they say. They might even have tears flowing down their faces. They're trying to convince people to leave the solid foundation God gives and go to a different one. And it's risky. It's dangerous. What they say, it begins to erode the ground and put people's spiritual lives at risk. Yes, it may be difficult to pick them out because they might sing the same hymns as you do. They might say the same prayers. They, they might give the same praises. But what they offer is not the same. It's not the same solid foundation. We can only unmask them by doing one thing. By listening to them and watching what they do. For Jesus said, by their fruit you will recognize them. You do not gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles. Do you? So then every good tree produces good fruit, but a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into a fire. So then by their fruit you will recognize them. 
what they say goes against God's word, we as Christians should have this little warning flag that goes up. Kind of like those emails that those evil people send. You're reading through it and you're just like, this sounds right, but it doesn't. It kind of sends a warning flag up. And you start watching out and you pay close attention and you might even look on, online to make sure that this is a scam or this is real. Or, or maybe you think of people who pretend to be the government and they're really not that. And they're trying to deceive people. That, that's what these wolves, these predators are, are trying to do. They're, they're trying to slash and kill the sheep. God's sheep. They're leading these people from the heavenly rest that God wants them to be to the destruction in hell. You might start thinking, who would do something like this? They, they should be punished for doing this. Oh, well, and they will. For we hear from Jesus himself. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and drive out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Even Jesus calls these wolves, their actions, evil. Even though they, they were preaching and teaching in his name, they were hurting people. They were hurting their spiritual souls. The foundation that they were promising wasn't the, the truth of Scripture. They were promising something else. Isn't this a huge deal? Isn't this a big deal? Don't we want to take this seriously? We certainly do. But there's so many people out there that don't. Maybe you even find yourself not taking it as seriously as you should. When you bought your house, or maybe the land that you built it on, you probably made sure that the foundation would be good. Maybe you even had an expert come in and, and check it too. Maybe you even checked it twice. Why? Because you wanted a home that was secure. You wanted a home that would stand a long time. Because a home is where you, you sleep. It's where your family grows up. It's where those memories are made. We want to make sure the foundation is good. And if we think this way about our homes, we want to think about this same way about our spiritual homes, our souls. We want to make sure that they're standing firm. Do you always care as much about your faith as you do your home? Do you watch out as much as you do for those scams? If it be an email or a telephone call, as you do the wolves who, who try to attack your spiritual faith. They can come in kind of deceptively. They, they, they look like us, a sheep, but they're ferocious. They're vicious. They come in through the TV. They come in through your phone or computer. Yes, they, they sound nice, 
but what they're saying goes against God's word, the truth. There's other ways these things can attack. It may be, be through your TV in the sense of the, the news or TV shows or, or movies. It could be from neighbors and, and friends. It could even be from family. They have a variety of attacks that they might use to attack your faith and your foundation. They might claim that their foundation is much stronger than yours and it's better, it has a better view. They might say our church isn't as strict and rigid and old as yours is. But as you look at their house, you see the foundation eroding. You might hear somebody say, I'll get to heaven. I'm not worried about it. I've been good to my neighbors. I've been good to those who I interact with in my life. I'm not worried about the life after this. I'll get there on my own. But as you step back and look at that person's house, it's teetering on the edge, almost about to tip into the sea. There's many attacks. And the, the land over there might look better from this earthly standpoint, but it's not. The words these wolves spit out, before they even say it, their foundation is almost gone. And they're like those houses falling into the sea and bobbing like apples. And maybe you find yourself not taking what God's Word says seriously and putting it into your lives which is extremely dangerous. If we go down that path and build our home on that, our, our house will disintegrate in the waters and sink to the bottom. And soon we will find ourselves in that destruction of hell. Jesus says how important it is to build our house on that foundation. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does, does them will be like a wise man who built his house on bedrock. The rain came down and the rivers rose and the wind blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because he was founded on bedrock. Everyone who hears these words of mine but does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell. And it was completely destroyed. We want to take this foundation seriously. That is where we want our house. But when we start to become careless with our faith and lose focus, we run a risk of falling in. And we want to avoid that. We want to avoid what God will say to those unbelieving people. I never knew you. Depart from me you evildoers. But how do we avoid our spiritual houses, our, our souls, from slipping and sliding off into the sea, into the depths of hell? The only way is through the foundation that was standing on that mount, speaking to the crowd, the one who was speaking to us, 
our Savior, Jesus. And even the crowd knew how great he was, how special he was. For they said, when Jesus finished speaking these words, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught with one who had authority, and not like their experts in the law. We see this solid foundation standing firm on the Word, standing firm as one of us, but was also God. There was nothing that would erode or take away that foundation. No. Even Satan tried, but failed. There we see our bedrock, our solid foundation, marching to the cross, and there he held himself without shaking. without stumbling, without wanting even to get off. There our foundation hung, enduring hell, enduring our sin, even to the point of death. Even the grave couldn't hold our Savior down. The stone that was rolled into place couldn't keep Him locked in there. No, our Savior busted out of the grave and He rose from the dead. This is our foundation as Christians. Our God and His Word. This is the foundation our church is built upon. This is the foundation our faith is placed upon. What a blessing it is that a church like ours here at Calvary can proclaim that truth in times of trouble, in times of joy, in whatever we are going through. That God's Word will continue to be preached in that truth and purity week after week after week. And we as Christians find ourselves and our spiritual homes upon that solid foundation of our Savior. And every time we hear God's Word, our houses are being built up. There is nothing that can bring them down, as long as we are on Jesus, the bedrock of our faith. No storm, no trials in life, no death, as long as we are on that rock, we will endure, because we know what's waiting on the end, our Savior. Thank goodness. The Lord built our spiritual house on Him. And we cherish that foundation of God and His Word. Amen. Let us pray. We join to pray. Our Father in Heaven, hallowed be Your name. Your kingdom come, Your will be done on earth as in Heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, in your great wisdom you called your child Dan Winter to his heavenly home. Even though we rejoice in that fact, the family and us are still sad. Please be with Dan's family during this difficult time. Bring them comfort and reassurance. You will be with them in the coming days and weeks and years. We long to be with you one day. 
the place that our Savior won for Dan and us. Please, Lord, we thank you for being our foundation. We thank you for giving us your word so that we could come to faith. We thank you for holding us firm through the struggles of life. Please help us with our struggles and pains, for that we may focus on you, and that you may deliver us from those who want to devour our faith. We go to you to find protection in your arms, and you hold us safe. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 We conclude with the closing hymn. Thank you for worshiping with us today. It was a pleasure to have you. If you'd like to find out more about our church, you can go to our website. God's blessings on the rest of your week.